Howdy folks, Sapper here, aka Sean, and I'm bringing you Next War, World War III. Alright, it's been a little bit. It's been probably, I think the last time I did a video was before Christmas. So yeah, I kind of took a break and was fiddling around with my new camera setup and all that. And we'll see if this is any better or worse or whatever. So we are in the basic movement and combat phase right now we finished up the basic movement phase so it's the initiative or first player so in taiwan it the first play we have no initiative player because it's a contested turn so the first player is china because they were the initiative player um and I need to I need to look at that real quick to see see who the first player is. I'm I know it's China because they have maintained the advantage so far, but I believe the first player could could switch depending on uh, victory point differentials. But China's maintained a victory point lead, so they're still the first player. So anyway, so combat phase I've chose chosen two places to do combats the first one being right here on this stack so what you see is I've got everything kind of laid out as to as to what was going to support it and all of that it ended up being I think what one and a half to one odds um, with column shifts and all that I managed to get it to the nine column so basically two to one odds China threw in naval support they threw in a bomber and they threw in a combat support helicopter. Um, the Allies threw in some cyber warfare, which was successful, by the way. So that gives them a that that helped them negate um, an efficiency rating column shift. So and it, it was not destroyed. Then they also threw in the. The FCK-1, what a terrible acronym for a plane, by the way. Um, and then one of their Apache helicopters. So all the Chinese air support made it through. The Apache made it through, but the FCK-1 did not because it got early detected. So between SAM and AAA, it negated its... It's uh, plus two support. These are minuses. I just don't have a minus counter. So there you have it. So it looks like the allies are going to have on the two to one column or the nine column, it's going to be minus five to the die roll. So that's basically, that was that's a long winded way of saying, hey, we got a minus five DRM on the two to one column in Flatwoods. So that is a two. So that is the best results you can get. So it looks like it will be three step losses and a retreat. That is not good. So it's gonna be this guy. He has to take, well, I think actually everybody will take a step loss rather than eliminate any one unit. So everybody gets a step loss. Actually this goes on that armor unit. Then it looks like they have to retreat too. So we will go, I think we'll just go back to there. One, two, actually some guys will go in there. So we'll throw, we'll throw you in there. We'll throw you in there. I'm going to leave that armor unit out in the open. Mm. I really, really want, I, I, I want to get these Marines and these Airborne out of here. I, I want them to be able to go other places and support other stuff. So it's really kind of a pain. Is this all airborne? Yeah, that's all airborne there. So we'll go in there, we'll go in there. And then, is that? Okay. And then these Marines will go in there. All right. 
So there you have it. That's it for right there. Then we have we have this combat here, which is going to be these two stacks. Uh, it is two to one odds. I threw in. Let's see if we can. So the allies threw in this FCK one, com or helicopter support. Chinese threw in an H6 bomber and helicopter support. Um, when it was all said and done, this aircraft was aborted. This helo was destroyed. It, it, uh, it got an X result, which means take a step loss. It had already taken a step loss, so this helicopter was destroyed. Uh, this bomber was destroyed. It was weakened by an F-18 came up to intercept it. The Chinese sent up an interceptor. Um, actually, you know what? I don't think the Chinese could have done that. They were supposed to allocate, eh, whatever, it's too late now. So they had an escort. The escort was aborted. The F-18 re-engaged, managed to reduce it. And then um, Sam and anti-aircraft fire finished the H-6 off. So this plane has been destroyed. Uh, the Hilo made it through. So the allies, okay, the allies also threw in some uh, cyber, which was successful. So we are on the two to one column. And overall, the uh, Chinese get Chinese get a minus two DRM. So on the two to one column, minus two. So that's a two. That's good for the Chinese. It looks like one step loss and a retreat for the defender. So who was... Yeah, we're going to say that guy right there. He was the lead unit because I definitely... All right, where do you go? So I think that is... Yep, yeah, that's two hex retreat. Hmm... I think we'll go. Not that I want to go there, but we'll go there. I just don't... Dang it. Actually, I... Yeah, I have to do two hexes. That's the problem. I wonder if I can... I don't know if I can retreat across... I'm going to say I can't retreat across that river because there's no bridge there. And then, uh, I really don't, look at that, those guys are reduced. I really don't want them there. So we will do that. Knocking on Tai Chung's door, but this right here is the problem. I really need that to be cleared in order for this invasion of Taiwan to be successful. I need a port. So, so that is the best option. And then this port right here is my second best option because it's the next closest one, but it's kind of far away. I got to get this riffraff cleared out of the way. So, so there you have it. That is Taiwan. That'll wrap up combat in Taiwan. Now I have to do combat in Korea, and then I'll move on to basic combat in uh, Vietnam. All right, folks. After looking at the Korea situation. I'm going to call it a situation. Um, it's not looking too good for the Koreans. All right, the out of supply really has hampered stuff. So uh, you can see here, there's nobody engaged with anybody. So I can't do any kind of attacking here in this situation. This is the far east side. This is the eastern coast. And then as we kind of go in and look, you can see that there's nothing that I can do here. And then we've got really the only spot in this area that I would want to attack that I could get any kind of advantage would be attacking that hex right there. Um, this is the bad part. So if we look here, you have fortifications and it's a city. So the fortifications get you 
minus two column shifts and the city gets you minus two column shifts. So that is bad for the North Koreans. I can attack from four different hexes. Note that these guys are out of supply. Um, attacking into the, and the terrain is also terrible. So that's Highland terrain. So armor and mechanized are halved. So I looked in the rules, you can only half once, right? So, you can, so the out of supply and the attacking into Highland terrain and attacking across the river, they don't, they don't compound, right? So that's, that's a good thing. So basically I'm only having everybody one time. So all three of these stacks, four of these stacks are halved. So basically I can get, the best I can get is two to one odds. Minus four column shifts. I can support with this artillery way up here. And then I can also use chem, which would reduce the efficiency of those of these units here by three. So that would basically it would give me three column shifts for the chem and one for the artillery, so four. So the column shifts would e even out, right? And at two to one odds in Highland. It's the seven column, which isn't that great. So then I would have to depend on air support to get me some good die roll modifiers. Well, here's the problem. If you look right over here, the North Koreans don't really have anything to support with and the South Koreans will probably be able to shoot it down anyway. So I think To attack this hex would be really kind of foolish. I don't see it. It's a two to one column Highland Woods. I would have to roll a three. Well, I'd have to roll at least a five or lower. So that's, I mean, that's a 60% chance. I mean, if I roll the five, each, each side's taking a loss. And I, it's a, that's a tough decision to make right there. I really don't know if I want to do that. That is going to be extremely difficult. So I'm going to have to think about that. That's, I mean, I got a 60% chance. I'm going to take a loss. As the North Koreans, I'm taking a loss at a five. I think I'm going to go ahead. I don't know. I'm going to have to use Cam. That's going to give him victory points. Yeah. Oh, man. This thing. The, you know what? I don't see that happening because the allies, so let's go back to the air again. The allies have plenty of air support. They'd probably, my guess, are going to throw in that A-10. They can only, the allies can only use one aircraft. So the best, the best use of aircraft would be that A-10 right there. That's if they use it. And me being the allies, that's a, that's a US unit right there in that hex too. You know, I don't want that uh, I don't want that unit getting taken out. So wait, that A10 is gonna make a big difference. The Koreans got nothing, man. They've got nothing to protect any air support they throw in there, they've got no air superiority. I don't think it would make it, because I think the Allies would just shoot it down. So the, the only hope would be that that A-10 doesn't make it through. But if we look right here, the, the detection track is, is down here right now for the Koreans. And it's only there for this turn, right, because of the, the cyber warfare. So the chances are they're not even going to be able to detect that A-10 as it comes screaming in and proceeds to just 
spray everybody with 30 millimeter gunfire or is it 25 millimeter I don't remember I think it's 30 millimeter cannon but anyway whatever it is it's that a10 warthog is gonna be nasty so I honestly think I'm not going to do anything as the North Koreans that really hurts because I'm I mean the I've been able to press a really good advantage for the North Koreans, but man, without air support, geez, you're you're hurting. So yeah, I think I'm not going to do anything as much as that sucks. And hopefully I'll get everybody back into supply and I'll be able to push just massive amounts of troops forward, at least down here. So yeah, that, that really sucks not being able to, I'm not gonna be able to get good odds. So I, I will not attack. All right, so I've just conducted the combat phase for the initiative player for Vietnam. There was four potential areas, so we'll kind of zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see the map. So we've got two combats here. We've got one combat over here, and then we have one combat over here. So let me cover those. Yeah, the glare's going to be a little bit bad on this section just because of where this map is sitting. It's sitting kind of close to the window, so... It's going to be a little bit harder to uh, avoid that. So we had, I want to say, so it was this infantry guy, he was sitting here. We were able to, because he's in the jungle, right, um, he was reduced as well. Or was it the armor unit? Eh, I think it was the armor unit. So he was reduced and he had a strike one marker on him so basically your efficiency rating goes down to a two had those two units there um, he was not able to get any defensive bonuses for being armor and jungle so that kind of helped us out anyway he was eliminated and then these both being mechanized slash motorized were able to advance too so that's that one there was an infantry unit here we were able to get a much bigger advantage. We were attacking from both of these two hexes, and we were able to advance and take that over. Actually, this guy can go here if he wants, which I will do. I don't know if there's any advantage to advancing two right there because there's really nothing in my way, but whatever. Uh, the third combat or potential combat is right here. I decided to not do it. Uh, the jungle terrain is really the big deciding factor. Um, I can get 13 to 12, which is basically one to one odds. Um, I can't get enough advantage from efficiency rating differences because I can always use him, even though it is a surprise. So I decided to not do anything there. And then the last combat was right here in this city. And it was a single infantry unit, and I was able to, I think, from these two hexes, was able to basically nudge him out of there. I was able to get uh, three to one odds with some good efficiency rating bonuses and also the fact that it's surprise. Got a good roll out of that. So three out of the four potentials were really good. One of them I just didn't even do because I didn't want to... Uh, take the losses basically what I think I you know if things go well I should be able to move in from this direction move in from this direction and just kind of surround Hanoi and then maybe isolate this stuff up here and, and get them to surrender that's the plan uh, we'll see what happens but that is it for the initiative slash first player basic move in combat now we will go to well actually these guys will get exploitation i think where uh, it's not on this map dang it i believe i get to do um reaction move in combat here in vietnam korea and uh taiwan we get to do the um what is it let's go over here and look at it it's over here on this map so Vietnam will get to do elite reaction, exploit move, and exploit combat. And then Taiwan and Korea will get to do reaction move and reaction combat. So there you have it. All right, so we are now doing the 
reaction movement and combat segment. I thought that there was that I would do a exploitation and whatever the other elite reaction, exploitation movement and combat over on South Vietnam, but I forgot. We've already done that portion, so everybody is in the basic and movement and combat segment. So I have done the reaction move and combat, which is the allies, so I move this amp into the Spratly Islands inshore box. I moved this carrier battle group and amp into the South China Sea. This sag moved from the Marianas. This is the you this is the Australian, I believe. Moved these guys from Japan into the East China Sea, and then I took a risky move, and I actually moved the U.S. Carrier Battle Group Number One and SAG. I wish they had names on them. I'm gonna have to name them, like you know, because they do have names, you know, like whatever the carrier's name is is the actual name of the battle group. So I, I might have to name these. Um, but anyway, they I, I decided to risk them moving into the Taiwan Straits because I want to get the these Chinese vermin out of the Straits, right? So I flipped, so I had some subs in there. I had a Chinese sub and a rock sub. So they flipped over, they revealed themselves to help give DRMs to the their perspective sides because it's a contested move into there. Um, when it was all said and done, each submarine took a strike two hit, so the Chinese one decided they were able to retreat back to their holding box, which is what they did, which is over there. The Republic of China, Taiwan, doesn't have a holding box, so they stay here in the straits with a strike two marker, so they could probably more easily be sunk, but the, carrier, the U.S. Carrier Battle Group and SAG did make it into Taiwan, uh, the Taiwan Straits. So that was the most important thing. Um, now there's probably going to end up being some surface combat in here and uh, we'll, we'll definitely see what happens but that was oops that was definitely uh, nail biting for the US right because we definitely don't want to lose a carrier battle group what probably wouldn't have lost it but it would have been had a strike marker and card on it and, and all that stuff so anyway that's it for the naval movement I don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of anything else, but uh, I'll be back in a bit with uh, the resolution of all that stuff. Mm, so we'll roll. That's a seven. That is not detected, so those guys get through. I think the max... The max DRMs I can get is minus six, so from air support. So that would be, if you look here, well, I don't know if you can see these, but this is a four and this is a three. So I'm going to lose one of those. So that's a minus six. I have, let's see here. I'm on, I'm on the three to one in, what is that? That is Highland, I believe. Yep, that's Highland. There's no fortification there, so. Three to one, which drops down to two to one because the artillery that the artillery support that the North Koreans provided. But I have a minus seven die roll. Or minus, I actually have a, a remainder, so I do have a minus seven. So let's go ahead and roll. That'll be a two. So each of us take a loss, and he has to retreat, which sucks because I'm going to take a step loss here, which I did not want to do. That was the worst roll I could get was a nine, so that really, that really bites. This guy's lost because he's only a one-step unit. Um, Highland. All right, I can try to pass an efficiency check and avoid retreating. So I think my best efficiency is a six. I, I think it goes with the worst. Well, let's roll and see what we get before we make that decision or I have to look that rule up. So that's a zero. So they pass their efficiency rating. They do not have to retreat. <clears throat> so they have lost 
one, I believe I get one victory point as the allies. This guy will go up here. And well, that didn't quite pan out the way I was hoping it would pan out. Of course, when you roll when you roll a nine, doesn't matter what your DRMs are, right? Of course, the Highlands really kind of screwed things up. So there you go. That is all of the combat that we have for the basic movement and combat phase. Now we go on to isolation, surrender, reorg, reinforcements and replacements, and basically all the the game turn ending stuff. So I will leave it here for now. I'll kind of show you who's getting what. And then we'll go from there. All right, folks. Uh, so you're no, probably going to notice that the uh, the views change a little bit. So I just got my new tripod in, which is about twice as high as the old one. So I'm going to have a more zoomed out view. Being this is the first time I'm using it, we'll see how it goes with the rest of the the rest of this particular turn. I think. Um, All right, so I've just conducted reaction move. So basically, like this section over here, you'll notice that I, I pulled them back. You know, does it does it make any sense for them to to stand and fight? You know, that that was key terrain, right? Because of the city, I get the column shifts. But you know, I pulled some guys back into a city, so you know, I guess it kind of kind of equals out. Uh, move these guys. There's an installation right there. I'd kind of like to try to hold. Probably not going to happen. I think the final line is going to be this river right here, obviously. But we'll try to delay, delay in this area as long as possible. And then... And then over here, I just kind of consolidated some stuff here. You know, no, no, no big moves, but just kind of bolstering the line here and here in the, the first two urban hexes of Taichung and then getting more guys on the other, on the side of the river behind them. Because, again, that'll be a, a sticking point is the, uh, is the river. So let's go over to Korea and show you what I did. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Let's show you what I did on the naval display. Or did I already do that? You know what? I already did that. I already covered the the naval stuff. So basically, the big the big thing here was getting this uh, carrier battle group and surface action group into the Straits of Taiwan. That was the that was the big thing. Now back over to Korea. All right. So not a lot. Not a lot happened here on the eastern side. And then really the, the big stuff, I think, is going to be I, the, the Marines that were in this port right here. What port is that? Inchon? Yeah, I think it's Inchon. Gim, Gimpo, Inchon. So I moved the Marines out, so they're, they're taking their places on the line right there. And really, that's about it. Um, wasn't a lot of moves going on. Of course, I debated a little bit what to do with these guys here in the east, but then, you know, I just kind of said, you know what, I'll, I'll wait to see what the North Koreans do. And then lastly, we'll go over here to Vietnam. And basically, again, pulling guys back, right? We got to fight the defensive battle. So I just decided to pull back rather than try to stand and fight. You know, move these guys here. Jungle is really defensive terrain, so it's, you know, infantry is doubled in the jungle. Move some guys back, started pulling them back to Hanoi. Getting headquarters off the line. These guys here, unfortunately, I couldn't do a whole lot with because this infantry unit has a strike two, so that means their movement rating is reduced by two and they're out of supply, so basically their movement rating is halved. So they have movement of one. I didn't want to leave them by themselves, so I left that armor unit, that armor brigade with them. I don't know if that was a good move or not, but I guess time will tell. And then of course, you know, I'm trying to make the final lines along the roads here in the jungles. Because infantry get that uh, they get that jungle advantage. 
So now all we have left to do is uh, reaction combat, and then after reaction combat, we will uh, it'll end up being you know reorg and reinforcements and and all that kind of stuff, and we're getting prepped for the next turn. So once I once I decide what combats I'm going to do, well, honestly, on this map you can tell there's not going to be any combat. <clears throat> because these guys aren't going to fight these guys over here. So really, that's the only place that we could do combat on uh, Vietnam. So I think it's safe to say that there'll be no, no big offensives in, uh, in Vietnam. Let's go look over here. Let's go look in Korea real quick. So along the east coast, there is nothing. Nobody is engaged. So you can kind of see right here. Oh, look at that. So nobody on the, along the east coast is engaged. So do we want to do any fighting? I mean, that might be a spot. I think that's that place has got... Uh, there's potential there. But this is the problem, right? Is if we force these guys to retreat then I have to move into there. And that's not, flat terrain is not, it, it's not very good defensive terrain. That's not where I want to end up having any of my mechanized units. I don't want them there. That's the, that's the big problem with that. I don't want to move guys into that. Um, let's see here, what is that? That is Highland. That that one might be worth it. You know what? I think that's probably a better... Unfortunately, these guys are in supply, so that's what, 10, 12. 12 defense versus 12, um, 28, 32, 41 to 12. That's 3 to 1. That might be <clears throat> that might be worth it. I think I will do that one. And let's look at Taiwan real quick. Um, so obviously nothing over here to the north on the island. This is probably the one spot that I would want to do an attack. So what's that? That's six. Of course, my guys don't have really good efficiencies, so six, ten, sixteen. Sixteen to ten, so that's <clears throat> one point five to one. Probably not. I think I might pass on that. So let's go back to Korea. I think we'll do that one combat. We'll definitely have the air advantage. That's that's one thing that you really can't dispute, is I will definitely have an aerial advantage in the skies. Aerial advantage in the skies. I'm getting a little redundant in my my word, my verbiage here. So what did we say we have? Let's see here. We'll do that's ten. That's twelve. <coughs> All right, 12, and we have, what did I say, there's 12, there's 16, so that's 28, 28, 32, 41. All right, um, we'll definitely support them, so that's 16. Sixteen to forty-one. That gets me two to one. Um, Thirty-two. Can I get to forty-eight? If I can get to forty-eight, that would be three to one. I need two headquarters. I can get to forty-eight. Yeah, there's four. Because he. Can support that guy. So that was what is that? That's a four. 
Yep, that's a four factor. And then got orange or red. And that's a four factor, so we'll do that. So that's another eight factor, so that's 49 to 16, which equals three to one. Oh man. I will use this guy as the lead unit as much as I don't want to. Yeah, so he'll be the lead unit. Um, that's not good. This guy will be the lead unit. <clears throat> okay, let's see. They've got that support. I can support that with artillery. So the efficiency ratings are going to equal out. Um, <clears throat> they will get one column shift to the left. The Koreans will. Because they're supporting it with artillery. And let's see what... The Koreans don't really have any aircraft they can support it with. Of course, I can support it with... I can support it with these two. And then they don't have anybody they can shoot it down with, so I don't even need to provide cover. I don't need to provide an escort. Let me find where is my... Let's see if they get detected. Detection for North Korea is four. So that's one. All right, we have done just about everything. Um, I haven't done reinforcements or anything yet, but what I wanted to do is there was some clearing operations. So I think there was one here. So the North Koreans successfully cleared that city. That was the only one here. Vietnam, we had two. So we had one here in Cam Pha. There's that port there. So the Chinese were able to clear that. They were not able to clear the port of Ha Long. And one that I almost forgot about is over here. I've forgotten about the Malaysians in the Spratly Islands. So you can barely see the glare. There we go. If I move it over there just a little bit. So they drew a low marker, but they uns they were unsuccessful. They didn't have the stacking points present. So when that happens, you take a step loss. These guys are only one step units, so they actually lost a unit. So they didn't get Spratly Islands. It might they might not get it because next turn the Philippines the Filipino Marines will be there. So that is definitely looking bad. Um, I think that's about it. I did. I repair or I built up the salmon detection tracks and for Vietnam. I built up the salmon detection tracks for Taiwan. I built up the detection track I think for Korea. That's about it. Um, and I think the only thing I have left to do now is just place reinforcements. So I need to figure out who's getting what. All right. So I just uncovered all the reinforcements that everybody gets the odd supply point replacement point here and there but the Chinese they're basically going to get most of the 78th group army looks like we got a couple special forces coming in on the allied side these are all the air forces coming in on the allied side which is good um, got some more Japanese we've got these reserve units coming in on Taiwan the Australians are committing now so they've stepped up their game a little bit. We've got some of the 101st coming in, at least the 1st Brigade 
with some helicopter support. We've got more Marines coming in. And then over here, the North Koreans have that. They've got three random brigades coming in, some more special forces, and then I think that's all of the uh, 7th Corps. Yeah, that's all of the 7th Corps. So there you have it. That's the... Uh, that is the... Uh, reinforcements now I just need to figure out where I actually want to assign these I'm just kind of using the master reinforcement schedule that came with uh, next war Vietnam and then I'll just kind of decide where they go which which theater I want stuff in so that ought to be interesting so that'll be that'll do it for that and then uh, I'd spend the odd supply point to um, reconstitute some headquarters and I mean not reconstitute but uh, some of them I think there's a, an, a headquarters or two that's taken a step loss so I just need to spend some supply points to to get those back to full strength side but that's about it so one thing I did forget to do is redo this clearing operation I forgot kind of forgot about it until I just now looked at it I needed to roll higher than a seven or a seven or higher and I got a nine. So that is very good news if you're the Chinese player. So that, that makes a bit that's going to make a humongous difference, especially with all those units piling up in the basing box in the People's Republic of China. Now probably these guys here, I'll probably divert them to Vietnam, but most of that other stuff, I want to get that here onto the island so that I can start getting some of these airborne units off the line so I can use those airborne units in other places. But uh, yeah, I've completely forgotten about that guy. So that operation has been done. So here we go. Let me put, let me put that there. I believe that's three victory points because I believe it's plus one for a city or a town and then plus two for a, um, installation. So there you have it.